Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the Highway Real World Fuel Economy Test of the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette. Now this is the non-Z51 package, so we're running three season, all season tires, technically. So this is essentially a base car, just with the 2LT interior package. Everything mm, performance-wise is, is base, other than it does have a performance exhaust. Now the reason we do these fuel economy tests are because the EPA highway fuel economy test averages 48 miles per hour. And we'd like to see what a real world highway cruising speeds of 70 miles per hour, what sort of fuel economy you can expect to get from that steady state cruising. So we can see here that the 2020 C8 Corvette gets 27 miles to the gallon on the highway. Let's see if we can't beat that. Before we get started, let's hop out. Maybe. Take a quick look at this car. It's interesting, you have to have the doors unlocked to unlock. It doesn't automatically unlock when you press the button. So this car really needs no introduction. This is Chevrolet's mid-engine Corvette, brand new for 2020. It's been a hoot holler and a half to have it around. Tons of looks. If you guys wanna see more on the Chevy Corvette, check out the links in the description to our Bose sound system test as well as our full review of the car and we might be doing some sort of back road blast intro drive as well okay oh it's a big squat to get in here makes me feel old so let's fire it up we always do these tests with the car in its most efficient setting for the so for the Corvette that's going to be tour mode. We're gonna go just over 50 miles out and then 50 miles back on the same route. We've got our climate control set to 74 degrees auto. Ambient temperature right now is 69 degrees. We're gonna head on over to the shell fuel pump. We're gonna use the same pump for both our beginning and final fill for some mode of consistency. And we're gonna use the three click method to fill up with gas. So for those of you who don't know, that's where you high flow, let the pump click, wait 10 seconds, low flow, let the pump click, wait another 10 seconds, one more low flow, and then you're considered to be topped off. So let's go out, fill it up with Shell Premium, and get back in the car. This would be a great time for me to ask you all to like and subscribe as I'm putting away my dollars into the tank of the Corvette here for this test. Little goes a long way from your end, so little uh, little like button, little uh, subscribe button, little comment on the video maybe, guessing how much fuel the car is going to take. We just shot the winding road day drive and spun these tires around here on the wet asphalt, so a little bit thirsty this Corvette is. Also, what do you guys think of this red interior? I'm not gonna open the door to minimize static shock, but what do you think of this color as well? I think it's uh, some sort of gray metallic it's called, like steel or something. There we are. Topped off. Slow release. Drank a good 9.3 gallons, so should be a good proper fill. Okay, so before we get started, let's put the car into accessory mode here. We're going to restart our tripometer. I don't know why it's paused here. Let's close it out, relaunch. Paused, running, reset, okay. Now, I'm going to, oh, it says we have to start vehicle to view the app, so start that up. Okay, we're reset. Off we go. Drive it in automatic mode, obviously. We're just going to take it nice and easy onto the highway here. Some people ask, why I don't pick one of those gas stations that's just like smack dab on a highway exit, but a lot of things go into the consideration of where to do this test. Part of it is 
we have to have tanks that we can consistently get back to, the same ones. So this one's not super busy. I can almost always get to the same pump. It's got a parking lot right here for me to start the video. And it's exactly, it's actually just over 50 miles away from a good exit. And you have to be able to take a good highway. That's not gonna have a lot of traffic consistently. There's a lot that went into the planning of this. So even though we do have to sit through a few lights to get on the highway, it seems like the safer call to make. So the idea is not to hypermile on this test, not to be drafting and driving super conservatively. The idea is to drive as somebody would on a road trip. Try to not draft people most of the time, try to get a little bit cleaner, more accurate number. We're gonna travel at 73 miles per hour, and that provides two main benefits. One, by the end of the test, it'll allow us to average about a speed of 70, all slowdowns considered. And also, it'll allow me to be a little bit less of a sitting duck than if I were to chill right at 70 miles per hour. So we see that the car says 73, and on the GPS, it's bouncing back and forth between 72 and 73. So let's get this dialed in, 73 miles per hour. And then we'll decide whether we stick with that or go up to 74. I think it's going to be a safer bet to go up to 74. So we got 74 indicated, which gives us 73 on the GPS. We'll head out here and touch base in about half an hour. Okay, just over halfway here on the Corvette C8 fuel economy test. Things are going very smooth. The car is comfortable as anyone would expect for a highway trip like this. Absolutely phenomenal fuel economy as well. Keep in mind this is a 490 horsepower V8 and we have been averaging 31.3 miles to the gallon according to the car's readout. That's after 60 miles. Odometer seems to be quite accurate as well. We're just just under 0.2 miles off of the GPS. GPS is saying 59.7, that says 59.9 right now. So no big surprises here other than getting great fuel economy. Kind of expected that given, uh, you know, given the nature of the car and it's cylinder deactivation. It's been spending a lot of time in V4 mode. So you can see Right there, we're only running on four cylinders. The other ones are resting and getting 36, 37 miles to the gallon. Well, now we're starting to go down a little bit of a downhill, up to 52, 59, 60 miles to the gallon here at 74, 73 miles per hour. Been a little bit frustrating. I can't seem to keep the car to just stay at 73 GPS indicated all the time. Cruise control kind of kind of varies around, but we have been averaging about 69 miles per hour. And I'm still comfortable. I'm keep testing the sound system and driving on. here just starting to get into some rain so fortunately we're about a mile from our exit I'm not surprised but I'm still impressed at this fuel economy according to the dash we're looking at 33 miles to the gallon average speed of 70.5 miles per hour coming in on 107 miles on the test 
no real surprises. Just smooth, comfortable. One thing that is interesting to note, for those of you who do like to rest your knee up on the wheel every now and again, if you're grabbing something off of the passenger seat or maybe a snack or taking a drink or just using your knee to steer for a little bit, it is tougher with this flat bottom steering wheel to get a good, uh, good back and forth control with your knee. So maybe that's not exactly vehicle PC, but for some of you, it's important nonetheless. What else to say? The sound system's good. The ride is good. It is a little loud in here, even with these all-season tires. It's not exactly a quiet cabin on the highway. But the engine's quiet. You don't have to worry about that. We're going to come on back into that same fuel pump. Hopefully it's open. 108.4 on the GPS, 108.6 on the dash there. Top out, fill her up. All right, there we are. 2020, brand new. <laughs> 3.546 is what we're looking at. <laughs> Take it easy. You always get comments on the vet. 3.546. So we're looking at 108. 4 divided by 3.546 gives us 30.6 miles to the gallon. So that is a little bit lower. Can we dismiss that and just see the trip computer without starting the car? I guess it doesn't matter now since we're full. So the car thinks we got 32.9. Fuel is saying 31 or 30.6. Okay, so, oops. Take it for what you will. I think that's still a conclusion that even with all of this power, the slipperiness and the cylinder deactivation of the Chevy Corvette allows it to get some incredible fuel economy numbers. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in. Like I said, if you wanted to see more on this Corvette, we've got a full review. We've got a sound system test on this Bose Performance Series audio system. Sounds quite good, but not the best on there. So if that's interesting to you, check that out. Other than that, I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.